here we are with the very last game of 1992. And because I happen to like Symmetry, I put the Ultraman Club game in this slot, just like the previous year. Ultraman is a space cop from a distant galaxy who comes to Earth to fight giant monsters. He can grow to giant size himself, but his powers run out after a few minutes. Ultraman Club has been a series of RPGs based on the series, letting many different incarnations of Ultraman team up. This is the fourth entry in the Ultraman Club series, which is why it's now a side-scrolling action game. The plot of Ultraman Kaiju Dai Kessen is that an army of monsters is attacking the Earth, and original version Ultraman is dispatched to fight them. However, the rest of the Ultra Brothers have been captured by that army, and Ultraman has to travel to various worlds to rescue them. The game has seven stages. Okay, five stages, a boss rush, and then a final boss. In the stages, A will jump, B will attack, and Ultraman has a really pitiful reach with his attack. Because of the size of the sprites, you almost have to be right on top of somebody to hit them. This becomes a major problem when you're dealing with the bosses. They tend to have patterns where they'll move around and then suddenly stop, and then suddenly start again. You do get a bit more reach with Ultraman if you do jump attacks, but it's not that much more reach. Fortunately, Ultraman does have a few ranged attacks he can break out. You use these by holding up and pressing B, and they consume a bit of his energy. There are four different ranged attacks, and you change them by hitting start, and then selecting which one you want. The four ranged attacks are... um... Okay, look, I'll be honest with you, they're identical. I had a whole section here where I was going to describe the pros and cons of each one. Nope, they're the same. As you go to the right, they increase in damage and also increase in cost, but that's it. The only one that does anything different is the third one, which can home in on enemies. So basically, you've got your choice of three shots that go straight forward, hit people, and do damage, but never enough to kill anyone outright, even with the strongest attack, and one attack that will turn a corner. Enemies will randomly drop something so that you can recover health or energy, hearts for health and little blue stars for energy. The dot at the top of the screen is Ultraman's gem, and it acts as a timer for the game. Eventually it will turn red, and then an alarm will start to sound, and that will warn you that you need to reach the end of the stage soon. Once you're confronting a boss, that timer no longer matters. If you die on one of the side-scrolling stages, then you're sent back to the beginning of it, but if you die against a boss, you come back right where you were with full health. There's two other pickups you need to be aware of. 1-ups, which are exactly what they sound like, and health kits. Health kits will fully restore your life, and you have to use them from the pause menu. You can carry up to three health kits at once. There's a lot more health kits than that in the game, though, so it becomes a real use em or lose em situation. There aren't a whole lot of distinctive terrain features in these sprawling levels. Sometimes you'll come across a button that you have to hit, and that'll activate a spring that will launch you if you're standing on it. And you'll also find these doors which will take you to a monster that will helpfully release three balloons. One of the balloons has an item in it, and you really only have enough time to break two balloons. A couple of levels have cards that you ride on, and you'll get warnings that there's something coming up that you'll have to dodge. There are power-ups in these segments too, but they don't tell you that those are coming. In fact, that's a problem throughout Ultraman Club Daikaiju Daikessen. There's a few points where you're going to be dependent on collecting power-ups that just fly past you. It's especially bad on stage 6. After some levels, Ultraman takes off to space for a bonus stage. Here it's a shoot 'em up and if you shoot down an entire formation of enemies, then they'll drop an item. Here it'll always be an extra life or a health kit. When you run out of lives, you do have infinite continues, but you don't retain those health kits, so if you game over during the boss rush, you might as well start the game over again. This is a relatively easy game, but if you're having trouble, there are cheat codes to let you skip ahead a few levels. Just hold down A and B on controller 2, along with one direction on the D-pad, and you'll jump ahead. Upon release, Ultraman Club Kaiju Dai Kessen had a weird hook for players. The final boss was an enemy who hadn't been revealed on the television show yet. So this was people's first chance to check out the villain. One problem with that, 
they hadn't finished designing the villain for the television show yet. So the final boss in the game was just a blank figure. There is one more Ultraman Club game released after this, but it was released as a special cartridge for the Daytach Famicom expansion. So it's not going to come up in the regular Fami dailies. Ultraman Club Kaiju Daikessen doesn't seem to be well remembered in Japan. Though, the people who do recall it mainly noted how difficult it was. And I kind of agree on that point. The stages themselves are easy. As long as you don't dawdle and hit the time limit, you can get by pretty fast. Okay, the traps are way more of a threat than the monsters, but it's still not bad. It's the bosses in Ultraman Club Kaiju Daikessen that really hurt you. And for most of them, there aren't many options beyond getting in their face and mashing attack. When you hit stage 6 and have to fight them all over again, it'll quickly bleed through all of your resources. One thing you're going to notice as you play is that there's only ever one monster on the screen with Ultraman at a time. In the process of making everything this big, they just restricted all of the action down to just one guy. The whole result is that Ultraman Club Kaiju Daikessen winds up feeling like a second tier game. It's not nearly as bad as the Ultraman Club that would reset you back to the beginning of the adventure when you completed the second to last boss, but it's not a game that's really going to thrill you either. It's just kind of there. Still, it's better than the other Ultraman game released on December 25th, 1992. That's a pretty low bar though.